Hey there viewers and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. So we got us a 2000 Grand Cherokee here. It's one of our crazy YouTube viewers uh, came up from Pennsylvania. He's up in the area and he has this 2000 Cherokee and it has the money light coming on as he's tooting down the road uh, under like steady acceleration at highway speeds and then you go into a deacceleration you know down a very slight incline like you know one or two percent grade all of a sudden the money light comes on and it just starts flashing but the the um, the kicker is is there's no felt misfire so that's uh, pretty bizarre kind of common with GM pickups that need a crank relearn done where they'll have just erroneous misfire codes and it seems to me that's what's happening with this thing so I wasn't gonna do a video initially but we decided to so in case it works out uh, I was able to or am able to duplicate the uh, misfire concern or the lack thereof the misfire counters climbing we'll say uh, right here in the bay just by uh, accelerating the engine and holding it at you know 2500 3000 ish rpms and the engine light will come on it starts flashing misfire counters count on all six cylinders you know at random uh, but the engine runs as smooth as a kitten um, however smooth kittens run uh, so I thought I'd bring you guys along I have my suspicions and I'm gonna lay that out on the line right now and this is what I suspect is the crankshaft sensor uh, and we have a Mopar one here because I just sent them to the dealer to go pick it up for me and I'm a little um, I don't want to say uneasy about it but I will be the first to admit I'm not 100% about it and I'm just basing this on other people's experience, uh, a little of my own experience, and my gut, the ice cream gut. We're going with that. Uh, what I've done so far is, you know, look at the vehicle, duplicate the symptoms. Uh, being that the crank uh, sensor is the key player in saying, hey, you know, I'm misfiring. Um, you know, obviously I looked at cam and crank synchronization, uh, which it is dead on the money. I have some known goods for these vehicles compared to that cam crank is perfect I did t check the cam crank sync uh, so its relationship with the cam sensor synchronization to the crankshaft and it's within two degrees so that's perfect uh, now the customer has already uh, I, I guess in an effort to combat this problem the vehicle has had a head on it uh, so Jeep does have a service bolt-in for uh, some valve issues they have with the rotators on their exhaust valves but they actually have felt misfires and that's the only difference here is we do not feel a misfire you don't hear it you don't feel it nothing um, I believe it's had a cam sensor put in it uh, ignition coil your basic ignition tune-up uh, into no avail nothing has worked so it's my turn to load up the parts cannon and give it a launch so I'll let you guys I'll show you where we're at show you what we're seeing uh, all of my files uh, the Pico files uh, no sense of putting the snap in files there, but the Pico files I'll have in the description box below. So if we're right, you can compare the bad to the good because when I look at the crank sensor that is in it, I'll be 100% honest, it looks 100% perfect. All right, so we will reach in here, the classic reach around. And what's this got? It's got a buck 70, buck 65 on the clock, the money light's on. So we're going to come out here. So right now we have our Pico hooked up to the uh, crank sensor and the cam sensor. I was just capturing some data for myself. So we'll let that run. Change my trigger here to kind of steady it out. So there we go. And then we'll come on the old virus. We'll load up our misfire counters. And I know the uh, engine may sound a little wonky on camera, but indeed it's running as smooth as a four liter can run. We're tapped in right at the PCM. Uh, again, this is crank, cam, and then sensor ground. Uh, I, I see that on our, um, on our Pico. We do have a little bit of noise. I assume that's secondary ignition because we have six events. I'm not super concerned about this. This is completely unfiltered right now. Uh, so I guess it's, I should say it's not uncommon to see that noise. So what we'll do and you can see we have some misfire counters already starting to count up even though the engine's running smooth so what we'll do I'll prop the throttle here a little bit So we'll 
I'll save that. And uh, we'll go ahead and shut it off. So I'm sure the engine light's on and flashing. So the money light is on and flashing. We'll shut her down. So we're gonna pop back here to where I saved it, where the RPMs were up. So right here we were at a higher RPM, like 2,500, 3,000-ish. And this is when the misfire counters were going high. Uh, we'll come down here, we'll check our sensor high and low voltage here. So these are usually just a smidge above zero and just a smidge above five volts. So we'll set our zero and five volts lines. And then we're gonna take a look. I guess we can do that on the uh, cam sensor just to be on the safe side. Let's see, we'll set that one at zero. We'll zoom in on an event here. So our cam timing is perfect. You know, if we have a known good waveform, if we line up our cam and our crank, this is exactly where it should fall. You have three groups of four that fall in between a, a rising and falling edge of the cam there. So that, that's good. Uh, but I guess what we can kind of focus our efforts on is, you know, our crank waveform captured during, you know, this misfire event or supposed misfire. I don't, I don't see anything wrong. I mean, unless I'm, um, you know, obviously missing something. I don't see anything wrong. And some of the reports I was reading, whether on IETN or on Identifix, uh, guys were saying the same thing. You know, they had aftermarket crank sensors. They scoped them. Everything looks good. Put in a factory one. You know, boom, things fixed. Nobody really elaborated on anymore. So um, I have saved these. So we're not going to save these ones. Um, I'll put these files here. I saved. Uh, I saved this one here. This is when the misfire counters were going up. And then I have one. Uh, just key on engine running, no misfire counters, you know, at an idle. So those will be in the description box. And I'll put a link where you can get the Pico software so you can look at them yourself. So anyhow, that's where I'm at. And I'll be the first to admit that honestly, um, not feeling the misfire, you know, that's super bizarre. Uh, I do remember talking to Keith about this one time. I, I don't remember the situation, what we were talking about, but somehow we got talking about one of these where I believe it was one that he, he was doing or helping somebody on, and it was the same thing, you know. Just studied that crank sensor to no end and could not find a reason, you know, why in the heck is this, you know, doing what it's doing, put a new one in, everything's fixed. So I was 90% certain I was talking to him, so I called him this morning and asked him, like, hey, was I talking to you about this? And he said, yeah. And... Um, you know, it's kind of a short conversation, he's busier than heck, but uh, you know, he said that he has ran across this before. So, uh, needless to say, I'm kind of guessing, all right? I'm just gonna let it out there. I didn't want to say the word, but I'm kind of guessing at this point. Um, I really hate saying that, I'm not a guesser. But we're gonna pick it up in the air, we're gonna put a crank sensor on it, we're gonna see if it fixes our problem. If it doesn't, we're gonna have to go a little bit further. Uh, I'm kind of backed against the wall because, like I say, I don't, there is no misfire. If the misfire, and this engine was happening as fast as it was displaying the events on a scan tool, you would hear it. I mean, this thing would be running like crap. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll try to show you. So the crank sensor lives up there. That's the top of it, that black thing. And then there's a uh, bolt on either side of it. It comes down by that zip tie and I've already unplugged it. So there's the connector and just give you the broad view where we're at, it's just right up there by the tranny. A little bit easier than the Grand Cherokees. I think we can reach up there with a socket extension, swivel, and hopefully slip it out. It actually takes a 7 16 socket. We're gonna drop the nuts, I'll tell you that. I'd love to be able to show you up in there, but you are gonna have to use your imagination today. I can barely see it myself. So I'll get them loose, I think we'll probably have to use a magnet. You may actually be able to get this from up top if you wanted to wrench it out. It might be possible. Let me go grab a magnet here. Oh, a little bit of a stiff neck today. Alright. So there is one bolt. Hold it in. There's bolt number two. That holds it in. And then I don't know if we can just. And there is our crank sensor 
right here, the old one. I don't see any physical damage to it. I'm not sure if it's OEM or not. He did say he put one in it one day. It was a no start, apparently, like five years ago or so. And he put a crank sensor in it. Now this one has some writing on the side of it. And this one doesn't. It just has a little bit of yellow uh, writing on the back. Is it OEM? Isn't it? We may never know. The bracket is slightly different. It has an extra hole. So, I wonder if we're nifty enough to uh, slide this little guy back up in. I'm not that nifty. Let's see. Ah, this is going to be the classic up and over. Trying not to get burnt. thinking bro. All right, well I'm gonna fiddle with this to get it up in. I don't want to have you guys watch me struggle for the next hour. We'll get it in, get the bolts lined up, tighten it up. I just want to know if it works. Well that wasn't too bad. I got it fished up in there. I just used my magnet with the flexi head, stuck it on that and slipped it right up in. So then we'll use the classic rag on the bolt trick to keep it in there. We'll see if we can't get it in. Now these are not adjustable air gap on these. So I got the right in. The bolts, however, have a shoulder on them. I don't know if you notice that or not, but these bolts are shouldered. I assume they fit that hole perfectly and hold it at the air gap in which it should be. I've done some of these with aftermarket sensors where them holes are like slotted and they have a little strip of cardboard on the end and you push it down to set the air gap and whatnot. Let's see. All right. Here comes the crazy YouTube owner. But you don't want to talk during our video. Camera shy. Always camera shy good. back. I heard it. All right, we'll get it plugged in. Everybody cross your fingers. All right, crank sensor is in. We'll fire the Pico back up after I enter my secret code. Don't listen to the clicks. I'll try to figure it out. In case you ever get my laptop and want to log into it. Um, we'll open the Pico back up. Of course, we'll fire it up. I don't know how you guys feel about me openly admitting that I'm taking an experience-based guess, but I have no other data to go on. Um, and, you know, like I was telling the customer that, you know, when we have crank sensor counters counting up erroneously, we have to really kind of focus our efforts on, you know, where does the crank um, misfire, where do the misfire counters come from? What's the key player in that? You know, we're talking ECM, crank sensor uh, mainly. So it's gonna look at crankshaft RPM and it's gonna see if there's, you know, any discrepancies in that. And then, you know, in association with the cam sensor, it's gonna identify which cylinder is the one that's, you know, slowing down, you know, uh, because of a misfire. Uh, in this case, you know, none of that's happening. Everything's hunky dory. So I'll get this set up, we'll start it. Everybody hopefully still has their fingers crossed. All right, here we go, firing the hole. We're not gonna clear the light or anything, so that'll probably still be on. Hey, it runs, that's a plus. So we got our misfire counters open.
All right, so we can see that obviously it is fixed. Can I tell you why? I can't. But what we're gonna do, I'm gonna capture these waveforms for you folks. So I'll save that one as an idle waveform. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll hold it again at that higher RPM. Uh, I'll fill out these channel notes and stuff. Yeah, so we still got our misfire data here. I'm gonna bring it up to a higher RPM and I'll save the file for us. So this one we're going to save, uh, I screwed up here, let's see, Keon and Drang, 25 RPM, new sensor, no misfire counters, okay, so we're going to save this one so you guys can compare it and see what you see, it's going to scream at me here because I got it, we want to replace it, yes, so there we are, that file's going to be kind of big, I tried to save just three frames for you, a lot of data. Um, so down in the description box you are going to find all four of these files and they're captured at the same so we have uh, Keon and Geranga idle new OEM sensor uh, with no misfire counters 2500 RPMs new sensor no misfire counters and then the same thing uh, same data gathered with the old sensor that was in it so I'll put them in a file you'll have them down below download the Pico software have a look at it and tell me what you think well, there you have it, folks. Uh, another crazy YouTuber satisfied, I assume. Are you satisfied? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's absolutely satisfied. He says with a smile. Um, I don't know why. We are just listening to some Quiet Riot, wasn't it? Paramount. And he didn't know why. So, um, like I say, in the description box, there is the links to all these waveforms that we gathered. This fixed it. I did take a guess, and it's an experience-based guess. I still don't know why. If cures him. Uh, I've looked at the waveforms. The only discrepancy I see is the on time. Let's compare at an idle, let's say our cam sensor, you know, one event of the cam sensor is 86 milliseconds. And we look at the crank sensor, you know, on time. And it changes the, the deviation between, you know, our bad one and the new one is about 200 microseconds. Um, is that enough? Is that what's causing it? I don't know. Um, what I'll do is I'll keep the old sensor here in case one of you guys that's absolutely brilliant wants me to check something on it. I'll have it at my disposal. Other than that, I don't have an answer or an explanation other than some days cars suck. And you have to take a guess, and we did. And But we were right, so that's good. Anyhow, uh, we'll leave it at that. So check out the files in the description box. There's all that stuff that you'll need there. And uh, just let me know what you think in the comment box below. And also down there, you can put your questions, comments, and criticisms. Find us where you can find us. Find us on Patreon. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.